Sergeant, I've got a full statement from him. Start typing. Oakley Park Police Station, 6.35 a.m., prisoner's statement. You asked me about last Friday. I will tell you. I got up early in the morning. I hadn't been able to sleep. I walked along the high street. It was deserted. Everything was quiet, and I was all alone. For the first time, I felt afraid of what I was going to do. I wandered about until I found myself at the station. I watched them going to work, but I kept out of sight because a lot of them knew me. I spent the rest of the time just walking, avoiding people, waiting for the day to end. Down by the river, I followed a girl who reminded me of Molly. I found myself hating her, just as I hated Molly. That evening, I returned home. I took the stocking from my drawer. Then I walked over to the club. All the time, I kept remembering that passage from the Bible, but I didn't feel afraid anymore. I knew Molly was there because they were all watching, and I was glad because this was going to be the last time. I watched her at play, her body brown from the sun, and I hated her. And as I watched, everyone else was watching her too, especially the men. And she knew it, and she loved it. And all the time, I kept remembering those words from the Bible. And the hola played the harlot when she was mine. And she doted on her lovers, and they discovered her wickedness, and they slew her with the sword. Hey, oh, good shot. Hey, good shot. I'm afraid that it's good for us. I'm afraid so. You were wonderful. Uh -huh. Close game, Molly. We'll beat you next time. Mm -hmm. That's what you said the last time. It's hot. Thanks, Mark. Well, I'm off for a swim. Good shot, Molly. Well played, Molly. I've had enough. Hello, Peter. Hello. You should be playing tennis. It's too hot for tennis. You all right? Cigarette? No, thanks, Peter. That's Stephen's girl. I wish men would look at me like that. Please. Is that the way you bring up your daughter? Now, can you remember all this, George? Two gins and tonics, a lager, a Coke. Yes. Another Coke? Yes, what about please. you, Mary? I, I think I'll be going home, Mark. Excuse me. Mary. What's the matter, darling? 
Well, can't I give my friends a drink? I'd like to see how many friends you have the day you're broke, Mark. You want to make a Coming? I can't. I've got to... Right. Give Molly Stevens a lift home. Is she the next one on your list, Mark? She knew. She knew how the men watched her and how the women hated her. She knew the petty squabbles she caused and it amused her. But she didn't know she was going to die. Well, hello. What on earth are you doing here? Well... What do you want? Look, I'm not standing here all night talking to myself. My name's Hughes. Sergeant Rogers, local CID. Morning, Morning, Sergeant Beale. Morning. Well, let's get on with it, shall we? This way, sir. We found some prints. By the looks of them, the killer was waiting for her. Here we are. Both prints pause here. They might have stood round talking for a bit. Then the girl moved on, and the man followed her. Could have been someone she knew, then. That's very likely, sir. The body was found here. Know where she was going? Home, probably. She lived the other side of the common. She was coming from the sports club. Taking any cast of these footprints, Sergeant? Not yet, sir. Why not? Well, sir, I thought Beale. you might... get a cast of these prints right away, will you? Yes, sir. Found her. A couple of kids early this morning. Death certificate? John Fenner, a local GP. He estimated the time of death as around 10 p.m. last night. Who's doing the post-mortem? Counter pathologist. He's over at the hospital now. Here are some shots of the body. Come along, Dal. Would you like to take a look at her? Why, well, she's dead, isn't she? I'd like to see where she lived. Attractive. Very popular with the men. Yeah, not with the women, eh? Tidy little girl. What school's that? Harrow. Next stop, La Morgue. All good stuff. Poems by Rupert Brooke. Well, this one's a little out of place. With love from Peter Crowley. Crowley? He's a member of the sports club. He probably met her there. What about this sports club? Usual thing, dance every Monday, a raffle at Christmas. Respectable? Very. Ola played the harlot when she was mine, and she doted on her lovers, and they discovered her wickedness and slew her with the sword. And she became famous among women for judgment had been executed upon her. Hmm. Who's the other girl? Looks like the Dixon girl, sir. And the men? I wouldn't know. The Dixon's a big noise in this town. He's on the town council. He'll probably be mayor next year. Uh -huh. You know who he is? That's Peter Crowley, sir. Peter. Peter, this gentleman is... I'm a police officer. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I hope you're not going to upset him. All right, Mrs. Crowley. You see... Thank you. He's not himself today. Oh, Mother, he... please. What's this, a 350? 
Yes, that's right. What happened to the Tron? I sold it. Were you in love with Molly Stevens? No point in beating about the bush, is there? Yes, I was. What happened to Ron? Sort of. Were you at the club last night? Yes. And what time did you leave? I don't know. Oh, about nine. Where'd you go? I came home. Peter. Yes? You forgot the washer. <laughs> Thanks. What sort of school did you go to? Oakley Grammar. Did they give you Rupert Brooke at Grammar School? I shouldn't have thought Molly Stevens was the kind of a girl to have appreciated poetry. No, she didn't. Excuse me, I'll gun wash. Why did you and Molly Stevens break up, Peter? Someone else? Who said we'd broken up? A landlady? Who did she go around with after she dropped you? She didn't drop me. You but... had a row, didn't you? Yes, but... Why didn't you tell him, Peter? Please keep out of this. He's too decent to tell you. It's because he knew she was running about with a married man. Who was he? Mark Roper. I'm asking the boy. Who's Mark Roper, Peter? The way she carried on, it's no surprise what happened. Don't talk like that. All she cared about was having a good time, fast cars and boyfriends. Stop it! It's the truth and you know it. And the sooner you forget about it, the better. What time did he get in last night, Mrs. Crowley? About a quarter to ten. I see. Thank you. That's him, all right. He's going into change. See you back at the station. Right, driver. Hey, what do you say? Thank you. That's better. Come on, hurry up. Coming. Come along. Better. Hello. Haven't seen you around before. You remember? I'm a police officer, Mr. Roper. Really? Look, chuck me that tie, will you? That's a good chap. Thanks. Well, what can I do for you? A girl was murdered last night. I think it might have something to do with that, wouldn't you? Excuse me. Well, have you found anything out yet? You chaps are usually pretty sharp. She was a member here, wasn't she? That's right. I understand you knew her pretty well. What do you mean, you understand I knew her? Pretty difficult not to, considering I'm the club secretary. Didn't you ever uh, take her out? Oh, oh, I'm a married man. You can't play around in a town like this. Mr. Roper, I uh, get the impression this is what you might call a high-class club. Yes, I suppose you could call it that. Not the sort of place you'd expect to find a Molly Stevens. Uh, she didn't quite fit in. I can imagine. How'd she get in? Well, I suppose I uh, used my influence. I thought it was about time the club had a bit of glamour around. You get rather tired of buck teeth and bow legs, you know. There's a harrow tie, isn't it? That's right. Why, did you go there? No, I went to the London Polytechnic. <laughs> I well, suppose we go and have a drink, and then I can... Yours? Yes, I suppose it is. Where'd you find it? In Molly Stevens' room. Thanks. 
Where were you around town last night, Mr. Roper? Me? Now, you don't suspect me, do you? Depends where you were around town last night. Well, as a matter of fact, I was with Elizabeth Fenner, Dr. Fenner's niece. She was due on duty, so I drove her to the hospital. What time did you drop her off? Oh, let me see. We left here around 9.30, 10, 15 or later. Well, I'd better be getting along. Lots of things to do. Well, come this way, it's quicker. I remember about this. I lent it to Molly one evening to go home with. She'd been playing tennis and it was a bit chilly. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be running along. Yes. I'll go by, old man. Dr. Rees? Yes? I'm Halloran. Oh, yes, we met before. Uh, no, better wait till I've scrubbed off. Contagious places, these dissecting rooms. Your chap once cut his finger doing a job like this. Lost an arm. Nasty business, strangulation. Anything in particular? No, she was a perfectly healthy girl. In fact, she was extremely healthy. Pregnant women usually are. Two months. Thank you. Will Mr. Sister Hillary please report to Ward B? Sister Hillary to Ward B. Come in. Dr. Fenner? Yes, what is it? You uh, certified the death of Molly Stevens, didn't you, Dr. Fenner? Yes. Yes, I did. My name's Halloran, Superintendent Halloran. Oh, yes. Won't you sit down? Thanks. You don't mind if I go on with this? If I leave these cultures too long, they die. Huh? You also examined the body, didn't you? Yes. In cases of sudden death, uh, isn't that usually a job for the county pathologist? It was 12 o'clock at night. The county pathologist lives 15 miles away. See. Was Molly Stevens a patient of yours? No, no, she wasn't. Why? I read your report, Doctor. You couldn't have examined the body very carefully. What do you mean? You overlooked the fact that she was expecting a child. I didn't take an autopsy, Superintendent. A mere service examination would hardly reveal a two months pregnancy. Who said anything about two months? Are you sure she never came to you about it? I resent the implication behind your question. And I resent the withholding of information. Now, please, Doctor, just tell me what you know. Well, she was expecting a child. Some man came to see me about her. Who was he? I'm afraid I can't tell you that. And I'm afraid you'll have to. What I hear in my consulting room is strictly confidential. Even in a murder case? His name is Mark Roper. I see. He came to you for help? There was nothing I could do. All right, Doc. Now that we've sort of broken the ice, can you tell me anything about your other patients? Young Peter Crowley, for instance. As far as I know, Peter Crowley is a perfectly respectable boy. I've met a few perfectly respectable murderers in my time, Dr. Fenner. And I've met one or two well-mannered policemen. Oh. Sorry, I'll come back later. Uh, just a moment. I've seen you before, haven't I? No, I don't think so. My niece, Elizabeth. Superintendent Halloran. You, uh... You know Mark Rober, don't you? Yes. He tells me he was with you around ten last night. Yes, he gave me a lift to the hospital. Dropped you off here around about, uh... ten fifteen? Yes, that's right. Now, if you excuse me, I have work to do. Oh, thanks for your help, Doc. Well, that's all right. Do you remember what time Nurse Fenner got in last night? 
accused in casualty with me at 10 o'clock. A car accident case oh, came see. in and... Well, uh, could I talk to her now? If you wish. She's in the sterilizing room, second door on the left. Thank you, madam. Nice to see everyone so busy. If you feel like helping, the floor needs scrubbing. Are you going to ask me some more questions? Why, is it show? You're holding up the hospital, Inspector. Superintendent. Oh? Took me ten years to make that jump. Why were you trying to cover up for Roper? You didn't just make a mistake about the time, did you? May I get past, please? Is that why he called you to his office? To fix an alibi? I have work to do. Why should you lie for Roper? Got a special interest in you? Hello, Inspector. Still at it? Will you have a drink? No, thanks. Oh, I know. Not on duty, eh? Quite a collection you have here. Yes. Yes, they were good days in a way. Yeah. Did you fly? Yes, meteors mostly. When, when was that? Uh, 42, 43. Wonderful aircraft. Well, happy landings. Good luck. Oh, that. <laughs> that was taken when I first joined up. I hate to admit it, but I ended up a wing commander. Sounds rather grand now, doesn't it? Why didn't you come to the point, Inspector? <laughs> what is this? He wasn't asking about your wartime experiences. All right, old man. Let's have it. Mrs. Roper, perhaps you'd like I'm to... I'm staying here. I wouldn't if I were I'm you. I'm staying. All right. Molly Stevens was expecting a child, Mr. Roper. You don't say. Your child. You're leaving, Inspector. Right now. Sure, let's go and talk to Dr. Fenner. Fenner's a darn liar! We can prove it, take blood tests. Go ahead and prove it. I will. Just one more thing. Where were you around 10 last night? I've told you I was with Elizabeth Fenner. is isn't what she says. Why should she cover up for you, Roper? Are you having a fling with her, too? Get out. Go on, get out of here and take your filthy insinuation somewhere else. Sorry, Mrs. Roper. Make sure you're around if we need you. Here, Chief. Uh -huh. By the way, Harry, uh, you were in the Air Force, weren't you? That's right, Chief. Yeah, when did they start using meteors? Meteors? Early 44. 44, huh? Yes, yeah, what I thought. Check up on Crowley. The hospital report's in front of you. Hey, you've been awake. What's the hot spot? Roadhouse on the bypass, a uh, rock and roll joint. Not quite up to the standard of the sports club, huh? They're due up on a gambling charge, sir. Gambling? Whatever next. Time I was getting home. The sergeant. Sir? Care to join us for a drink? That's very kind of you, sir. But my wife's expecting me home. You know where the hot spot is, don't you? I should have been off duty an hour ago, sir. The murderer isn't off duty, sergeant. Who does he think he is? Well, stick around. You might learn something. Here, Chief, what about that drink? Hmm? Oh, plenty of time, Harry. You got all evening? <laughs> that the Dixon girl? It certainly is. 
Station. I'll take the car. Right, sir. Come on. What was the address again? 15, Ferry Lane, Oakley Park. Where do you live? I said, where do you live? Ferndale Road. Where's that? near the park. What's the idea of picking on me? You knew Molly Stevens, didn't you? I knew her. Everybody knew her. Yeah, but didn't you know her very well? No. Can't a girl have a good time once in a while? Well, I doubt if your parents will see it that way. some of that muck up your face. And when you get near your old man, don't breathe on him too hard. Mr. Dixon, there's a gentleman to see you. He... What on earth? Yeah, I know what's happened. What the devil have you been up to? I'm a police officer. All right, Agnes. Now, what's all this about? We just picked your daughter up in a car full of young hooligans. There was an accident. Another girl was hurt. The driver was drunk. Is this true? Look, come on, answer me. Yes, it's true. Yeah. I can't believe it. All right, Helen. Thank you for your trouble, officer. I appreciate your discretion in bringing her home. Perhaps, uh... Well, you can put that away, Mr. Dixon. I didn't bring your daughter home to keep your name out of the local papers. You're new around here, aren't you? I'm not from around here. I'm investigating a murder. Then shouldn't you be out attending to it? I am. Your daughter knew Molly Stevens. Knew her? What on earth would my daughter have had in common with a girl like that? Youth, Mr. Dixon? Now, look, all I want from her are the names of the boys Molly Stevens went around with. She just I forbid you to question her any further. You've caused enough trouble as it is. I've caused trouble? Is it my fault you don't know how to control your own daughter? Are you telling me how to run things in my own house? Well, it's about time somebody did. I shall make a point of reporting you to your superior. He's used to that. You come here, upset my wife and myself, make outrageous insinuations against my daughter. Look, a girl's been murdered, and all you can think about is how it's going to affect you. Well, I'm sorry if the sordid little crimes of others have stained your household linen. Very sorry. He's not going to be a police officer much longer if I can help it. You little fool. What do you think people are going to say about this? That's all you ever think about, isn't it? What people are going to say. Well, I've got news for you. I don't care what people say. You go upstairs at once, do you hear? You've never bothered about what I think, what I want. All I ever hear is, don't do this, Fiona. Don't do that. Well, I liked Molly Stevens. She was the only decent friend I ever had. And I don't care whether you liked her or not. <coughs> Do 
Do you know Wapping? I know it. I was born there. Well, there's a place you can see the dirt. Here, you have to dig to find it. When you get to it, believe me, it's just as dirty. Beal, get your notebook out. Yes, sir. Get Rogers in here, will you? We're going to put out a questionnaire. A bit early for that, isn't it, Take Chief? Take this down, head it confidential. One. Were you on the common around 10 p.m. Friday the 21st? If so, did you see anyone you recognized? If you did, please state his or her name in the space below. Two. Is this wise, Chief? Two. Have you any information of any description which you consider is of use to the police in helping them solve this crime? boys. Charles? Isn't that girl ready yet? Fiona! Good heavens, aren't you even dressed? I've lost my other nylon. They were my best pair. We're going to church, not to a dance. But I left them over I'm here just about fed up with you. I'm sending you away. A few months in the country might help to straighten you out. Now hurry up. Your mother and I are waiting. Were you on the common around 10 p.m. Friday? If so, did you see anyone you recognized? People around here aren't going to like this. Somehow, I don't think that's going to worry Mr. Halloran. Elizabeth, why did you tell Halloran that you were with Mark Roper on Friday night? Because you weren't, were you? No. You shouldn't lie to the police. Mark asked me to say I'd been with him. I know it was wrong, but I... I like Mary very much. Did it ever occur to you that Mark Roper might have killed this girl? Mary, look, about Molly Stevens. I don't want to discuss it, Mark. Well, for heaven's sake, give me a chance to... To what? Explain? You really think you can explain your way out of this, don't you? Don't bother, Mark. Just tell me one thing. Did you kill her? Mary. Did you? No, I didn't.
Eat your breakfast before it gets cold, Peter. Come on, Peter. Can't I decide if I want to eat or not? I'm not a child. What is it? What's the matter? Don't you care that Molly's dead? Well, naturally, I thought it was a terrible thing to have happened. But you don't care. You know how I felt about her, but you don't care, do you? I know you were fond of her. I was in love with her. And that's why you hated her. Going to be a nice day today, sir. Mm hmm. Mm. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Ma. It's going to be a nice day today. I just said that. <sighs> well, you come in swimming, Ma. I bet you look lovely in a bikini. <laughs> One egg or two? Three, please. Eh? And they're slow with a sword. Slow with a sword. A hold on. Well, anyway, it wasn't in our division. You know something, Harry? I think we already know our man. I think we met him and talked to him. And the only reason we can't put a finger on him is we don't know enough about him. Could be. If only someone in this town would talk. Morning. Hadn't you better go? You might frighten the children. I was pretty rude to you yesterday, wasn't I? Yes, you were. Sorry. I was uh, wondering if uh, if we could uh, Rifter. if we could. Uh... Rifter, my train won't go. Hey, that's a smashing train, isn't it? Where's the key? Where to go? Let's wind him up and see what happens then. Yeah, I was, uh, I was hoping that you'd uh, have some lunch with me. Who are you asking, me or him? You, you're older. Here we go. Now watch it. Stand back. Mind the mallet. Ooh! Rash! <laughs> Once he gets you on that, he'll have you on it all day. Got it! <laughs> well? Why? Why? It's Sunday. Sun's shining. Sorry I'm late. So you've got the little terror to sleep. What'd you do? Bang him on the head? <laughs> Are you off duty now? Until five. Lunch then. Well, I, I have to be home for lunch, but couldn't we just drive around? It's not such a bad town when you get to know it. Right. Bye, Joyce. Bye. Bye, Joyce. Better give it back. Oi, oi! See, um, what a policeman usually looks for in a case like this is somebody who, uh, well, who knows everybody. I was hoping that your uncle would be able to help me there, but... Uh... I'd like to go out in a boat. Huh? I haven't been out on a boat since I was a kid. You haven't? Come on. It'll be fun. What were you saying just now about getting to know people? Well, uh, there's a sort of familiar ring about this kind of murder, you know. Nylon stocking, attractive young girl, there's a psychological pattern to it all. Oh, you mean the murderer might be unbalanced? Well, uh, I don't know, maybe he just had a, maybe he just had a kink. Now, now take, a, take Mark Roper, for instance. What does he have for breakfast? Well, I've known Mark Roper for a long time, and I couldn't tell you what he has for breakfast. You 
don't seem to have got very far, do we? Maybe that's because you're going against the current. I see what you mean. Did you really want to come rowing? <laughs> Shall we go back now? It'd be easier going back. Maybe you're right. <laughs> ah. How can I get hold of that kind of money on a Sunday? Well, maybe you do, but you can't prove anything. Wait a minute. Hi. Hello? I can't talk now. No, ring me later. Sorry I'm late. You must be starving. I'll fix some lunch. Oh, Elizabeth, what were you doing with Halloran? What do you want? Information, I suppose. That is his job. Did you tell him anything? What is there to tell him? Hmm. He seems to have the idea that we're all sharing some common secret and won't let him in on it. Sounds like early stages of paranoia. He thinks whoever killed Molly Stevens is insane. Well. I'll fix you some lunch. Uncle John, will chicken salad be all right? Uncle John. Peter, dear, it's the doctor. Hello, doctor. Now, uh, would you mind leaving us, Mrs. Crowley? All right. How are you feeling, son? All right. A bit tired, that's all. Headache? Not really. Are you sure? My well, slight one, I suppose. I've had a headache for a long time, have you, Peter? No, I haven't. I did have a few drinks last night. You shouldn't drink. You know that, don't you? I said at the hospital it didn't matter. I'm telling you, you shouldn't drink. On your side, please. Why did you take a few drinks? I met some friends. Because you felt depressed? No, I don't think so. On your back. Didn't you take a few drinks to try to forget something? Forget something? Or had you already forgotten? You used to be pretty good at forgetting unpleasant things, didn't you, Peter? What do you mean, unpleasant things? When did you first get this depressed feeling, Peter? I didn't say I felt depressed. I... Was it after Molly Stevens died? You were fond of her, weren't you, Peter? Yes, I was. Are you sorry she's dead? What are you getting at? You had a row with her, didn't you, Peter? She hurt you deeply, didn't she? Well, we quarreled, but... Look, Peter, I'm your doctor. You can confide in me. What do you mean, confide? What is there to confide? Well, I told you I had a few drinks. That's all you can remember. You had a few drinks. You can't remember anything further back, say, as far back as Friday night? Why Friday night? Because Molly Stevens was killed on Friday night. But you don't remember anything about it. What are you trying to make me say? You hated her, didn't you? I don't hate anybody. You hated her because she rejected you. So you decided to kill her. You're trying to make me say something that isn't true. You killed her, didn't you? Leave me alone! You murdered Molly Stevens, didn't you? Didn't you? What is it? 
What have you been saying to him? He'll be all right, Mrs. Crowley. Go away and leave him alone. Your son is ill, Mrs. Crowley. If he's ill, we can send for another doctor. Very well. Is him, would you please, sir? Thank you. Here you are, Sam. We don't appear to be too popular. That really worries me. Hello, sir. Mrs. Crowe is at the station. She says she's got to see you. Here's the dope from the air ministry. There's Roper's bank manager, the one in the grey suit. Look, you go and talk to him, will you? I'll get back. Oh, no, thanks. The boy is very upset and frightened, Doctor. He doesn't understand why you've made these accusations against him. They were not accusations. They were merely suggestions. Oh, really? The boy's been very sick in the past. He's got a long history of depressive headaches and uh, lapses of memory. You didn't tell me this when I first came to see you, Doctor. Why not? Well, I wasn't sure about the boy myself. To put it in a nutshell, he's what is known as a schizophrenic. Uh, doctor, this is a report from the senior psychiatrist at the hospital where Crowley was under observation. Now, it certainly mentions the symptoms you spoke of, depressive headaches, lapses of memory, but it says nothing at all about schizophrenia. That was several months ago. The boy's condition may have worsened. Are you a qualified psychiatrist, Dr. Fenner? No. Yet in your opinion, Crowley is a mental case, quite capable of murdering someone and forgetting all about it. I didn't say that exactly. That's what you said to Peter Crowley. Yes, but... Uh... But what, Doctor? Come to see Dr. Fenner? Yes. I thought I told you... I had to... to see you, old boy. Come in. Now, you listen to me. I've no intention... My dear chap, don't let's get excited about this. And what's more, everything else you said is a dirty lie. Just the same. You left Toronto in a hurry. I told you, the medical board... I know all about this. People are getting jittery, Doctor. What are you doing here, Nurse? I, uh... I was looking for the matron. You won't find her here. No. She's probably in one of the wards. Good night, Vicky. Good night. Hello. Hello. Care for a lift? Well, thanks. What's the matter? Something on your mind? No. Worried about your uncle? The hospital secretary called me. I could have saved you the trouble. His records are locked up in my office desk. Why are you checking up on him? Why are you? Something I wanted to find out. About what happened in Toronto? The patient died. Unfortunately, the doctor made a wrong diagnosis. There was an inquiry, he was cleared. People around here got to know about this, it would... These people. 
It'd give them something to talk about, wouldn't it? Unless they were being paid to... Paid to keep quiet? Well, come on, let's have it. He's being blackmailed because of this. Who by? The doctor had a visitor this afternoon, a Mr. Mark Roper. Any connection? Well, is there? Yes. Mrs. Gerard, I'm well aware that the girl's funeral takes place tomorrow, but that's no reason to cancel the dance, is it? Well, it's a matter of taste, Mr. Roper. Most of the women members of the club... Most of the women members of this club would have cheerfully strangled Molly Stevens themselves, given half a chance. I'd like to talk to you, Mr. Roper. Yes, of course. Anything to help? Excuse me, ladies. Well, what is it now, Mr. Roper? I'm the last person in the world to condemn a man simply because he has a bad character. But it's my experience that men who go through life lying and cheating often wind up... Who committing... are you calling a liar and a cheat? You, Mr. Roper. I could sue you for that. And I could throw a string of charges at you that would knock you sideways, including blackmail and false pretenses. Wing Commander Roper. To start at the beginning, you were a sergeant filler in the Air Force. You were discharged in 1943 for helping yourself to the mess funds. If you've ever been in a plane, it was probably a ten-bob trip over Margate. You've an overdraft of 250 pounds at the bank, long-standing debts with practically every store in town, and to get yourself out of that mess, you've been putting the black on Dr. Fenner. And just to finish the picture off, you had an affair with Molly Stevens, and now she's dead. Are you saying I killed her? No, I'm not. Did you? people in this town, I wonder. You know the population of Oakley Park? It's over 50,000. And how many people have you met so far? A dozen? Sure, there's some real people here. Up to the moment, I've only met one. What's your grudge, Mr. Halloran? The name's Mike. Don't they pay you enough in your job? That's the first thing that comes into your mind, isn't it? Money, huh? Is that how they rate a man around here by how much he makes? Mike, I like you. The way you're going on, you're going to wind up all by yourself. Well, at least I try to be what I am. How long have you been in the force, Mike? Well, a long time. Are you married? I was. Had a daughter, just on seven. They were killed in an air raid. Where were you? In the army? No, at that particular moment, I was arresting a man for being drunk and disorderly. After it happened, I uh, tried to join up, but they wouldn't let me go. So I wasn't in the army at all. But at least I don't go around saying I was a major general. Maybe that's your grudge. You wanted to hit back at someone and couldn't. Well, uh, it's after 12, don't you think you'd better go in? Why?
going to go. When will I see you? Tomorrow night at the dance. Shall I call for you? No, I'll see you there. Goodbye. Bye. Till tomorrow, it'll be like election day around here. Trouble, I think. What do you mean? The AC's here. Who, Becky? Hold out the carpet. Hello, Mike. How's it going? Hello, sir. Can we um, talk somewhere? Sure, in here. Well, what's on your mind, sir? I hear you're having a little trouble down here. Oh, no more than usual. Mike, the Commissioner isn't at all happy about the way you've been running things. There have been a lot of complaints. Well, that's nothing new, is it? That's just it. Who, for instance? You seem to have rubbed a chap called Dixon up the wrong way. Bad choice, Mike. He has strings and he pulled them. Who else? We've had a lot of letters and phone calls about this questionnaire of yours. Mike, you should know better than this. You can't ask a town full of decent citizens to turn stool pigeon overnight. They're bound to resent it. Is that all? It's enough to send the Commissioner's blood pressure up a couple of points. All right, now let me say something. This killer's going to strike again. I know the pattern. I've seen it a dozen times. If we handle this town with kid gloves on, there's going to be another funeral within a week. Maybe, but this questionnaire. It was a questionnaire like that that pulled in the man who did the Harry's job. But that was three weeks after the murder. By that time, we were in dead trouble. We hadn't got a clue. Remember the Shrewsbury case? It wasn't until two more kids had been done in that I persuaded them to let me fingerprint the whole town. Within six hours, we had our man. One tiny fingerprint would have saved the lives of two children, but oh no. We didn't want to upset the town. It was a threat to the freedom of the individual. And it was. The trouble with you, Mike, is you don't like to play by the rules. Well, I'm here to tell you to take another look at the book. You want me off the case? Mike, you're a darn good cop. You must be, or you wouldn't have got this far. Why jeopardize your whole career because of a grudge? Who said anything about a grudge? Just watch it. That's all, Mike. I don't think we'll be seeing him here tonight, somehow. They've just phoned. They want me to resign from the club. Mark, surely you're not going to the dance tonight. Oh, what does it look as if I'm doing, going to bed? Oh, blast this time! Everybody in the town's talking about us, Mark. That's exactly why we're going. If anybody's got anything to say, they can say it to my face. Shut up and get dressed. Listen to me, Mark. Shut up, will you? Listen, I've had enough. I'm not going to stand Will you me. shut up? I can't. I can't. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Get dressed. Not going to the dance, Elizabeth? No. Why not? What really happened in Toronto? Didn't Halloran tell you? Good night.
Agnes? Coming, ma'am. Goodbye, Peter. Have Bye. a good time. Hello, Doctor. Going to the club, Fiona? Yes, I am. Up in, then. Well, all right. Dance. Well, I used to cut a bit of a dash at the pally. I bet you did. Why, are you thinking about going, Chief? I'm not, but you are. Well, that'll make a change. Listen, try and give me time for a few beers, will you? Wait a minute. Give me Elizabeth Finner. Yeah, hold on. Do you mind? Ah, Norman, my dear fellow, have a drink. Uh, I'm sorry, old chap. I'm, uh... I meet some people over there. Large whiskey. Mary? Mary! Oh, there you are. Mark, everybody's looking at you. Oh, well, let them look. Here I am. Have a good look. Mark, come on. I'm sorry for her. <laughs> uh, excuse me. May I have the pleasure? Glad I phoned you. Couldn't make up my mind at first. You sounded like you were pretty depressed. Ah, just been one of those days. Going badly? Let's talk about something else, huh? All right. What's this? Present, see. for your crummy little club anymore. Mm, you're all so fussy, aren't you? 
Well, I could tell you a thing or two about some of the people in this town. You think I'm a phony? Well, you're all phony. Every one of you. All right, old man. Now you said your piece. Don't you old man me. Mary. Mary. Okay, boys, let's go. Give me a scotch. Yes, sir. That's it. Nice work. Sign of a misspent youth. <laughs> Thirsty? No, hungry. Cheese and pickles any good? Fine. Excuse me. Oh, we, they could, uh, we could get some back up Mrs. Wilson's. Mrs. Wilson? Yeah, my landlady. Sounds good. Let's go then, huh? Well, thanks for the game, boys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Just a minute. Do you realize it's an offense to sound the hooter of a stationary vehicle? <clears throat> yeah, yes, uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I do, officer. And do you know it's an offense to sound a hooter after 11 o'clock at night? Yes, I realize that, too. People are asleep in this town, you know. You're telling me. There's no need for that. May I see your driving license, please? MT2 to Able 4. MT2 to Able 4. Here is a correction to message 50. Stand by. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, officer. Good night. Good night, sir. Who is he? Late Mr. Wilson. Died with his boots on. Backbone of the force, the police constable. There we are. Biscuits, butter, pickles, cheese, gorgonzola, cheddar, knives, forks, mustard. I've had a wonderful time tonight. Have you? Everything's been well, just right. It's quite simple. We just get on well together, that's all. Yes, we do.
Play, Buster. Isn't it beautiful? You're beautiful, Fiona. Oh, David, don't be silly. I love you. Oh, David. No, no, I do. I mean it. Then be a good boy and go and get me a Coke. David. Hmm? I'll be back as quick as I can. Oh, hello. I didn't see you. <laughs> Probably some dame out there saying no. Okay, boys, let's go. Yes? Fiona? Yes, just a minute. Superintendent, Sergeant Field for you. Right. Yes, Beale? When? All right, now listen. Phone the Dixon home. She's not there. Tell them to get to the station right away. That's it. Dr. Fernand. Two, please. Two gallons, right, sir. Importance, Doctor. Oh, uh, I'll get some change. How long ago did you say you left? Uh, just a minute. Hold on. I think you better take this, sir. Yep. Who? Yeah? Now, wait a minute. Are you quite sure about this? Listen, if you... The Circle Garage. Yeah, we got that. Now, stay by your phone, understand? Get an info man in here, quick. Yes, sir. Hello, get me the sports club and step on it. Baker, inside. Bring your pad. Is there any news yet? Have you found her? This is a police call. I want to speak to Sergeant Beale. You better sit down, Mr. Dixon. Yes, sir. Alarm call, top priority. I insist on knowing what has happened to my Hello, daughter. Beale, is Finner there? Well, find him and hang on to now, him. Look here, Hannah, and I'm not going to you better sit tight, Mr. Dixon. We don't know anything for sure yet. All right, Baker, get this. All men, all cars, apprehend and detain Dr. John Finner. Last seen heading north on B-32, driving a blue Humber saloon. Registration number... You can save all that, Superintendent. Fiona's dead. Where is she, Finner? Outside, in my car. Oh. Helen! 
Bring him along. Fenner, the rope is up. Don't lose it. Right, sir. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Now, listen, everybody. A girl's been murdered here tonight. <laughs> and no one is allowed to leave until I say so. I'll repeat that. No one is allowed to leave until I say so. Halloran, I put a dozen men in the grounds to see what they can find. Good. Sergeant, no one leaves, right? Yes, sir. Where's Roper? Oh, he left, Chief. Well, get him and bring him back, then. Right. All right, Doc. Let's get this straight. You left the dance, stopped for petrol, found the body in your car, came straight to the police. Is that right? Yes, I keep telling you that. It won't wash, Fenner. Would I go to the police if I'd killed her? It's been done before. Why'd you leave the dance so early? When I heard Fiona was missing, I looked around for Peter Crowley. He wasn't Wait there. Wait a minute. You're not going to try and swing that Crowley gag again, are you? Well, if you just let me finish. Crowley was here all the time. He never left the club. I put it to you, Dr. Finner, that you killed Fiona Dixon. You put the body in the boot, intending to dump it somewhere. But when you saw the garage mechanic phone the police, you decided to beat us to it. That's fantastic. What possible motive could I have for killing Fiona Dixon? That's what I'm going to find out. Sir? Yes, what is it? Miss Fenner's here. Why? What's happening? What's my uncle doing in there? Now, look. He's, uh... He's in a pretty tight spot. What do you mean? Uh... The best thing you can do is to go home, and I'll phone you later. But you don't seriously think he killed her? Now, please, just go home, will you? No. You'll not get rid of me that easily. Sergeant? Yes, sir. You're going crazy, Mike. You're just trying to pin this thing on anybody. This lady's leaving now. Yes, sir. Come along, miss. Just a minute. How long are we going to be kept hanging around like this? I have an urgent appointment in the morning. Maybe Fiona Dixon had an appointment, too. What is it, Rogers? I found this in the girl's handbag, sir. Take him outside. Go on, Doctor. The Bible quotation again. Yeah. But this time, it isn't torn out of the Bible. It's typed out. I've been waiting for something like this. Get Fenner back in here and Crowley and Roper. Right. Sit down, please, gentlemen. Sergeant, give him paper and pencils. What are we going to play? Twenty questions? All right. Now, put your name at the top of the page. Hey, what is this? Now, write what I tell you. And a hola played the harlot when she was mine, and she doted on her lovers. This is ridiculous. Yeah, what are we at, Sunday school? And they discovered her wickedness and slew her with the sword. Am I going too fast, boys? And she became famous among women, but judgment had been executed upon her. What part of the Bible's that come from, Mr. Roper? <laughs> Are you kidding? Crowley? Matthew, isn't it? 
from the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 24. Now, pick up the papers, Beale. Or I'll just take them outside. All right. Come on, this way. Come on, come on. What's the gag, Chief? How do you spell judgment, Beale? Judgment? J-U-D-G-M-E-N-T. Look, this is the typewritten copy found in Fiona's handbag. This one Crowley just wrote. In both cases, judgment is spelt with two E's. Now, it's not incorrect, but most people spell it your way. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's pull him in. What on? Because he's the only man in Oakley Park to spell judgment with two E's. But he's got no alibi. He had a row with Molly Stevens, and he's a bit of a mental case. Roper has no alibi. And he's got more reason to murder Molly Stevens than anybody else in this town. And he's certainly a mental case. The public prosecutor would sling evidence like that right out of the window. But you're not going to let him go. Send everybody else home. Take Crowley to the station. All right, Chief. But you were on the common, you admit that? Yes. What but... were you doing there? Well, I was going for a walk. At 10 o'clock at night? All right, son, now listen. I know you killed Molly, and I know you killed Fiona. I... Why is something only you know? Now, why not save yourself a lot of trouble and tell us all about it, eh? I didn't kill Molly. I... Well, I loved her. How could I kill someone I loved? Maybe you loved her too much, Crowley. I didn't do it. I didn't do it! All right. I'll give it to you again. You were watching Fiona at the dance tonight. You thought she was making an exhibition of herself. No. You disapprove of that sort of thing, don't you? I don't. And a holer played the harlot when she was mine. Oh, no, no. And they no. slew her with a sword. I don't know what you mean. When she and another boy left the dance hall, four people saw you follow them out. I didn't follow her. Well, where were you going? I don't know. For another walk? I, I went out. I wanted some air. You went out to kill her, Crowley. No. You killed her because you couldn't have her. I... You followed her down to the boathouse, and when she was alone, you strangled her with her own stocking, which you stole from her room. Then you dragged the body through the bushes and put it in Dr. Fenner's car, didn't you? Answer me, Crowley, isn't that what you did? Answer me! Fenner's arrived. Anything else you want, son? Something to eat? You sent for me? Doc, I need your help. You need my help. Now you need my all help. All right, all right, I know how you feel. I'm sorry. Well, don't say you're sorry. What can I do for you? Look, I can't hold Crowley any longer. I haven't got a case against him. Can we have him committed to a hospital or some place we can keep an eye on him? Is he willing to go? I shouldn't think so. Then I can't do anything about it. The boy's sick. He's not right. I seem to remember telling you that. Now, if you can prove that he's a danger to himself or his He's murdered community. two girls. How dangerous can you get? Can you prove that? We stripped his house from top to bottom. No shoes, no Bible, nothing. Talk to his mother? Not a thing. Well, it's your problem, Haldron. All right, Curly, you can go.
outside. Six fifteen. I've forgotten what a bed looks like. Smith and Harris will be taking over at eight o'clock. Yes, Sergeant, he's here. You, sir. Yep. Where? I'll be right over. I'm going to St. Anne's Church. Right, sir. And, Sergeant, get Dr. Finner there right away. Yes, sir. Thought I told you to stay with him. Well, we did, Chief, but he went into the church. Anyone gone up there? Yes, Harrison Rogers. Get a fire ladder, ambulance, and notify the rescue squad. Don't worry, they're on their way. Keep away from me! Leave me alone! Keep away, or I'll jump! All right, keep back. Keep back, back now. Come on, come on, back. Keep right back. Keep back. Now, if that boy dies. Rogers, Harris, come on down. Can you hear me? Come on down. My business. Help! I hope for your sake he's not innocent. He isn't. What are you going to do now, Mike? I'm going up to talk to him. Like you talk to me? Like you talk to Roper and my uncle? Do you think that'll persuade him to come down? Let's face it, Mike, your way doesn't work, except to frighten and upset people. You're the last person to go up there and talk to him unless you want him to jump. You may have taught me a lot of things, but you'll never teach me my job. What's he going to do? He's going to talk to him. Brought the jump sheets? Water. That all right? He wouldn't stand a chance. Well, never mind about that. Get them out. All right, jump sheets ready. Get to work. Now you've got a real audience, Peter. 
Is this the only way you can draw attention to yourself? Is this your way of showing the world they don't understand you? Because that's what you're trying to do, isn't it? You're saying, listen to me. I've got a problem. Everybody's got to listen. Isn't that it? Well, whatever your problem is, son, you can solve it very easily right now. But you're afraid, aren't you? You don't want to die, do you? Well, those girls didn't want to die either. But you didn't think about that, did you? You were just thinking about yourself. You didn't want to kill them. I just had to. But you did kill them. Will you? See you. All right, Harry. 